<laughs> Guys, here's what you need to remember. There's a lot of information right here, right? Look at all these big words. Huge. Where's all kind of crazy words right here? However, here's the key. The question is asking you, were pro eukaryotes? It's telling you they're eukaryotes, right? Why are they eukaryotes? And all of these items, flagella, hereditary material, which is like DNA, in the cell wall, these are all found in prokaryotes also, right? Remember in that little prokaryote. The nuclear membrane, guys, is attached. It's what actually surrounds the nucleus, right? So that's why that was the best answer. The nuclear membrane surrounds by the nucleus. So these types of questions are tricky. You need to make sure that you don't get distracted with all this craziness and you stick to what they're looking for, right? You carry out. And we know, um, Aniston, we know that pro is no and you is what? Do. do what? They do what? Pro is no, and you is do, and that's a nucleus, right? So pro have no nucleus, eukaryotes do have a nucleus, okay? All right, guys, we have quite a few things to do today just to kind of give you a little rundown. First of all, we're going to take some notes, your famous notes that everyone likes to take because... It's the only time I can get you guys to at least put your phones down. You have to put them down when you're writing. So it's kind of like a tricky measure here. And then remember that this will be taken for a major grade, right? So if you choose not to do it ever, you will be receiving a zero for this nine weeks. Um, I didn't know that it can be another um, the final, the final. Um, likely. Okay. <laughs> I think it's I don't think I'm gonna get out of this. So guys, this is actual let me tell you what page this is. So if you're in person, um it's right here. In person it's gonna be page um fifteen, I believe. It looks like this, because I skipped a few of them. I skipped a few. Wait, is it gonna be it's gonna look like this. No, is it gonna be Um I'm gonna give you a very comprehensive study guide that we're going to kind of do together. So if you do the study guide and you are paying attention in person, taking notes, or you are watching the Zoom or on Zoom, you should do, be pretty successful on the exam. I'm not going to put anything crazy on it, okay? okay? But you do have to do the study guide, and you will have to participate, right? You can't just, you know, if you just show up and you don't do it, even if you're not in person, you're just not going to be successful, all right? All right, online people, you're going to be on slide 63. Right around slide 63 in your online learning guide, um, which again can be found right here. Right? Yes, there's pencils over. Look where Lily is right there. Under number 10. Again, this should be a review for you if you're online. But remember, shh, if you are to click on number 10, you will see your own copy of this learning guide, and it will look like this. Right? It'll say viruses on it when you get to the slide indicated. Yours may look a little different than mine. Um, I will tell you that we're going to skip number these three right now. All right, I'm skipping the Amoeba Sister because I'm going to show you a much better video instead. Um, and so my online people, you're going to start, let's see, kids. Online people, we're going to start right here. Is that right? We're going to start right here, okay? So take a quick snapshot. You see how these two look alike? That's where we're going to start, okay? Again, I do. Before we start talking about viruses, I want to show you this really cool video. Um, and you're just going to sit down and stay at your desk and listen. Oh, yeah, you need to start talking this one. Um, and here's why. So, so far, we've talked about the eukaryotic cell. We talked about the prokaryotic cell. And then there's one more entity. Today, we're going to talk about viruses. The most important thing that you need to know about viruses is that they are not alive. Did everybody hear me say that? Yes. Are they alive? No. No. So, is COVID-19 alive? No. No, that's a virus. Is influenza a Yes. No, influenza is a virus. I didn't even know what influenza um, was. HIV, no. is it a lie? No. 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 This is a virus. virus. So you need to know this, guys. You should know these are common examples of viruses. HIV, COVID-19, 
influenza. Those are at least the three that you should know. Okay? Now, for bacteria, which are alive, the most common bacteria infections you should know about is staph infections, right, that you get when you get a cut and all that other stuff. Um, what else? What else did I say? Oh, strep is bacterial infection. So when you get strep throat, right, and your throat hurts really bad. And then um, the third one is like E. coli infections, which is like food poisoning. Okay, so I'll write those down too in a minute when we get back up there. But you should be able to list a few common viruses and bacteria. So why I chose this, this video is because, first of all, it's going to introduce you to our friend the virus. Um, and it's going to show you how it enters the body, which is super important. And then it's actually going to enter into a cell. So remember we talked about cell organelles last class period, right? Remember the mitochondria and the Golgi and all that good stuff? It's going to tell you how that virus comes in and hijacks your cells, which is what COVID does. Then it's going to show you why COVID is so dangerous and how it affects the body systems, right? So we've talked about body systems. We're going to pull it all together with this nice little video. Wait, so how system It's going to tell you. Watch. It tells you in the video. Look here. We're about now. Your immune system will if you've had it or if you have the vaccine. Right? It's going to talk about vaccines in a minute, too. But the first time you're exposed, your immune system doesn't know. Right? It doesn't have any type of memory. Your immune system has a memory. It has a long-term memory. So let's take a minute. I'm going to be walking around. If you're sleeping, I consider that not participating. And you will have to do both CK-12 assignments today. Does everybody understand? All right. So just go ahead and listen up. And while I'm, I'll be walking around taking roll. All right. Now, guys, again, remember, you're watching this. If you know someone that's had COVID, if you're wondering, is someone going to get the vaccine? These are all super important questions, even if you're not going to be a science major, even if science is your worst subject and you absolutely hate biology. This is things that you still need to know, right? It's called scientific literacy. It means that when you leave high school, even if you're not going to major in science, you should know how a virus infects your cells, right? Just so we're all knowledgeable and we can make decisions about, should I get the vaccine, should I not, right? What precautions should I take, okay? So go ahead and pay attention. All right, I'm gonna take roll. This, this is SARS-CoV-2. SARS -CoV it belongs to the family of coronaviruses named for the crown-like spikes on their surfaces. SARS-CoV-2 can cause COVID-19, a contagious viral infection that attacks primarily your throat and lungs. What actually happens in your body when you contract the coronavirus? What exactly causes your body to develop pneumonia? And how would a vaccine work? The coronavirus must infect living cells in order to reproduce. Let's have a closer look. Inside the virus, genetic material contains the information to make more copies of itself. A protein shell provides a hard protective enclosure for the genetic material as the virus travels between the people it infects. All right, I want to stop right here just for a second. What you'll notice, this is COVID, right? And other viruses are going to may look a little different, but here's what's super special. Guys, it still has DNA or RNA inside of it, right? Just like our cells do. But it's not living for several reasons, and we'll talk about it in a second. This is the second really important structure out here. You see all these little blue and red things? These are spikes, right? They're little spike crowns on the outside of the coronavirus. This is super important to a virus for survival. These spikes right here are going to enable it to be able to infect very specific cells, right? It's kind of like a puzzle. It's like a lock and key of a puzzle. Okay, so super, super important in infection. An outer envelope allows the virus to infect cells by merging with the cell's outer membrane. Projecting from the envelope are spikes of protein molecules. Both a typical influenza virus and the new coronavirus use their spikes like a key to get inside a cell in your body, where it takes over the cell's internal machinery, repurposing it to build the components of new viruses. When an infected person talks, coughs, or sneezes, droplets carrying the virus may land in your mouth or nose and then move into your lungs. 
Once inside your body, the virus comes in contact with cells in your throat, nose, or lungs. One spike on the virus inserts into a receptor molecule on your healthy cell membrane like a key in a lock. This action allows the virus to get inside your cell. A typical flu virus would travel inside a sac made from your cell membrane to your cell's nucleus that houses all its genetic material. The coronavirus, on the other hand, doesn't need to enter the host cell nucleus. It can directly access parts of the host cell called ribosomes. Oh my gosh, we talked about that last time. Do y'all remember what ribosomes do? Yeah. What? They make something. They make proteins. They make proteins. We just talked about this, right? So now the coronavirus, he's gotten into the cell. He's invaded it, right? And now, instead of going to the nucleus, the COVID right here, right? Now he's going to hook up with our friend, the ribosome. Do all of your cells have ribosomes in them, guys? Please tell me yes. Yeah, that's what we talked about last time, right? They all have ribosomes in them. This is exciting. Ribosomes. Ribosomes use genetic information from the virus to make viral proteins, such as the spikes on the virus's surface. A packaging structure in your cell then carries the spikes in vesicles, which merge with... Oh my gosh, do you guys remember what this is? Yes. Look here. Remember the Golgi apparatus, right? Remember the Golgi body? So now we're making all these proteins, right? And look here, guys. Look at all this, these little viral proteins are all coming off of the Golgi apparatus, right? So it's literally hijacked the organelles in your cell, right? It's taken over. It's like, hey, I want to take you over. I want you to make more of me. With, with, oh my jeez, what's going on? Your cell's outer layer, layer, the cell membrane. All, all the parts, parts needed to create a new virus gather just, just beneath, beneath your cell's, cell's membrane. membrane. Then a new, a new virus, virus begins to bud off from the cell's membrane. membrane. Now, with the, the virus, virus spreading in your body, body how can how you develop, develop pneumonia symptoms? This is important. For this, we'll have to look into your lungs. Each lung has separate sections called lobes. Normally, as you breathe, air moves freely through your trachea, windpipe, then through large tubes called bronchi, through smaller tubes called bronchioles, and finally into tiny sacs called alveoli. Your airways and alveoli are flexible and springy. When you breathe in, each air sac inflates like a small balloon. And when you exhale, the sacs deflate. Small blood vessels called capillaries surround your alveoli. Oxygen from the air you breathe passes into your capillaries, and then carbon dioxide from your body passes out of your capillaries into your alveoli so that your lungs can get rid of it when you exhale. Your airways catch most germs in the mucus that lines your trachea, bronchi, and bronchioles. In a healthy body, hair-like cilia lining the tubes constantly push the mucus and germs out of your airways. Right, guys? So these little cilia right here, right there near your bronchial tubes, um, has anyone ever had bronchitis? No. Or like when you cough? You've had bronchitis? I've had it before. Or like when you cough, it hurts really bad. It's like lots of congestion and you cough up like phlegm and stuff. You ever had that? So, no, no, no. It's called phlegm. So what it is, you see right here, right? These little cilia right here. Um, sometimes if these cilia are damaged, right, due to some type of bacterial or viral infection, if these little cilia go away, there's nothing there to, like, push the debris through, right, your respiratory system. So it all starts to build up, right? And so you feel like a re your, your chest is really tight and you're coughing up all this mucus because your cilia are not functioning properly, right? Because they're infected. That's why maybe they'll give you bronchitis or antibiotics if it's bacterial. But if it's viral, you just have to wait to get better, right? <laughs> it's like where you might expel them by coughing. Normally, Normally cells of your immune system, system attack viruses and germs that make it past your mucus and cilia and enter your alveoli. However, However, if your immune, immune system, system is weakened, weakened like in the, in the case, case of a coronavirus infection, the virus can overwhelm your immune cells and your bronchioles and alveoli become inflamed as your immune system attacks the multiplying viruses. Caitlin? The inflammation can cause your alveoli to fill with fluid, making it difficult for your body to get the oxygen it needs. You could do So here was the answer to your question. Your immune system is working, but it's working over time right now, right? And so it causes this inflammation. Yes. Of course. Yes. Yes, Gloria? 
Oh, I was telling you. Oh, go ahead. Um, okay, so we then develop um, pneumonia, right? When we get fluid. Develop a lober pneumonia where one lobe, lobe of your lungs is affected, or you could have bronchopneumonia that affects many areas of both lungs. Pneumonia may cause difficulty breathing, chest pain, coughing, fever and chills, confusion, headache, muscle pain, and fatigue. It can also lead to more serious complications. Respiratory failure occurs when your breathing becomes so difficult that you need a machine called a ventilator to help you breathe. These are the machines that save lives and that medical device companies currently ramp up production for. Whether you would develop these symptoms depends on a lot of factors, such as your age and whether you already have an existing condition. While this all sounds scary, the push to develop a coronavirus vaccine is moving at high speed. Studies of other coronaviruses led most researchers to assume that people who have recovered from a SARS-CoV-2 infection could be protected from reinfection for a period of time. But that assumption needs to be backed by... So this video is a little older, right? So we now successfully, we do have two vaccines now, Moderna and Pfizer. Right now, if you're over the age of 65 or um, if you have an underlying health condition, um, you can go get the vaccine, right? And it's about to be rolled out to everyone else. I will tell you it's not approved for anyone over the age of 16, but that's actually okay because you guys, right, kids, and not all the time, but you're more likely to be asymptomatic and you just kind of feel like you have a little flu, right? It's people that are older um, and have underlying conditions because their immune systems are really weak, right? The younger you are, you have a nice healthy immune system. Um, that is why, guys, they tell you to drink a lot of vitamin C because it helps with your immune system. And um, they tell you to um, eat zinc and take a lot of vitamin D, right? Because it, it helps zinc. Um, it's a metal on the periodic table, but you can eat it in pill form, right? And so it helps prevent colds or it helps to get rid of the symptoms of colds faster. That's the idea. Now that has not been FDA approved, um, but there is data that supports that um, it causes detachment, right, of the coronavirus. Um, from particular respiratory cells. So people, a lot of times people will take, um, if you have a cold, they'll take zinc um, to lessen the symptoms, right? So you, zinc, it is, I bet it is. I bet you're right, because everyone's taking it. Fat and vitamin C. And you can get vitamin C from anywhere, guys. I personally don't like oranges, but like these little things right here, right? These little well. Oh, you can see Welch's. These little Welch's things, like, they're only five calories, right, because they have splendid. But their first ingredient is citric acid, which is vitamin C, right? So I get my vitamin C from these things. So some type of vitamin C. Even if you don't like to eat it, um, you should get it some kind of way. I don't like oranges. Yeah, absolutely. You can, t you can totally take a pill. Sometimes the pill tends to be really large. But All right. Let's finish I out our evidence and some studies suggest otherwise. There are several different approaches for a potential vaccine against the coronavirus. The basic idea is that you would get a shot that contains faint versions of the virus. The vaccine would expose your body to a version of the virus that is too weak to cause infection, but just strong enough to stimulate an immune response. Within a few weeks, cells in your immune system would make markers called antibodies, which would be specific for only the coronavirus or specifically its spike protein. Antibodies then attach to the virus and prevent it from attaching to your cells. Your immune system then responds to signals from the antibodies by consuming and destroying the clumps of viruses. If you then catch the real virus at a later stage, your body would recognize it and destroy it. In other words, your immune system is now primed. Collecting evidence on whether this will be possible, safe, and effective is part of what's taking researchers so long to develop a vaccine. It's a race against time to develop a vaccine amid a pandemic. Each step in vaccine development usually takes months, if not years. An Ebola vaccine broke records by being ready in five years. So I'm going to go ahead and stop it here. We're going to really, we're going to focus on viral reproduction and vaccine production in our next unit. Um, I just kind of wanted to give you an introduction to what a virus was, right, and what its structure is. And 
we will be, I'll be getting the vaccine um, probably really soon. And so when I get it, we'll start talking more about it, right? How it's made and how does it make you feel and how does the, you know, how does it work on my immune system? Okie doke. All right, guys, we're now going to move on. I'm going to open to right here. So <laughs> if you're online, you can join me in this slide that I have presented. Again, I know it's really hard to follow along. So if you want to just listen online and just absorb the information, and then you can go back and watch the Zoom. Um, or you can go to the teacher resources, which is this, right, what I'm picking up right now. If you're in person, let me fix my camera. Why isn't this changing? Oh, Oh my geez, guys, this is crazy. All right, let me make this bigger. And it's still not too big. But now I'm going to zoom in because guess what, Gloria? I'm a zoom experto now. Expert. Expert. All right. So I'm going to start right here. Oh, no. Actually, maybe I'll start all the way down here. Okay. So look at, we're going to identify first the major important parts. I'll write on here in just a second. Okay, let, I'm going to open, you guys can see if you can figure out where they go, but I'll fill in the blanks for you as well. The first part out here, guys, this glycoprotein, remember that's the spikes that were on the outside of the virus. Super, super important. If the virus doesn't have those spikes on the outside of it, right, for specific viruses, it won't be able to recognize the cells, right, to invade. And that is the part of the virus that the antibodies are made against. Our second, uh, and again, I'll write these in in just a minute. If you can figure them out on here, go ahead and actually let me write. It. The, no, sorry. The glycoprotein, where is he? Oh, there he is. I see him. Oh, guess what? Just this one. Yeah, I know, girl. But then we're going to do a lab together, and then you have to do a CK12. Now, I have two CK12s, but if you're participating and you're following along with me, I'll only count one. Does everybody understand? Okay. So this is called, my friend, the glycoprotein. I'm going to go, I'll fill this portion in um, in a minute. It's on the other slide. Right now we're just labeling. Our next part is called the capsid, right? And these are two different forms. So the capsid are, are these little right ones out here. Um, where is he at? I don't even know where he's at. Oh, he's up here at top, right? So these are two different forms. This is called the, cap, the capsid, C-A-P-S-I-D. Whoops, sorry, the capsid. We'll fill in again. We'll fill in the other blanks in just a second. Let's just label them. My next part, oh, there's genetic material or nucleic acid genome. Guys, also known as DNA or RNA. Okay, so let me find, where is that one? Let's see, guys, where is he? Do you see it? Yes. Oh, right here, right here. Yep. So this is genetic material and actually I already know the answer to this um, this can be I just said it the genetic material can be what DNA or RNA and it can actually be single stranded or what do you think double stranded, double -stranded right we'll talk more about DNA later but guys let me ask you something this one? DNA or RNA, RNA. Um, so viruses have genetic material. Gloria, do eukaryote and prokaryotic cells also have genetic material? Do they have DNA? Or? Yeah, because they have nucleus. They do. Excellent. So, guys, that's something that viruses and cells have in common, right, is DNA. I know it's super exciting to you guys. I know. All right. I love this stuff. But guess what? That's why I was a science major. But if you don't love it, you'll like it eventually. Okay. The lipid envelope. Oh, here he is. Right? He's over here. It's right here, guys. It's this lipid envelope. Lipid envelope. Lipid. Or envelope, however you see it. I say envelope. Okay, we'll fill that in in a minute. Guys, this lipid envelope. 
um, super important when we talk about um, washing our hands, right? And this capsid, when we wash with soap, SDS, it actually dissolves that lipid envelope and then it bursts open, right? So that's why soap is effective in killing the virus. And then our last portion, oh, that's called the matrix. We briefly talked about this guy right here. Where is he at? Oh, there he is. The matrix. That doesn't work. Oh, I need a new set of pins. I don't even know what that is. What is that? You don't listen to her? Who? Say. Janaco? I probably know the songs. Do I know the songs? Does it come on the radio? Then I don't listen to. I'll tell you what I'll listen to after we're done. I'll listen Country. to. I do. Ah. Country in the 80s. She comes on on the Houston station. Oh, I bet I reckon. I'm going to tell oh, you. Okay. I'm going to tell you that my kid does tick, tick, tick all the time. And so I hear all these songs all the time. So I probably, I have probably heard the song. We're going to. Dance to it. Oh. What's that app called again? The Tick Tick? <laughs> <laughs> we'll play it the after we're done. See if I, does it have curse words in it? Samsung. Can't play it. Oh, Maybe she has a clean version. I'll find a clean version, yeah. Okay, after if we get all of our work done. Okay. So, does everyone feel comfortable with these parts? Yeah. That is, this is great. This is great to hear. All right. So, guys, here are the descriptions now, right? So let's see if I can do this. Yeah, this is going to be super exciting. The genetic material, oh, we already have this one. Look, if you read that information, right, notice here, the genetic material is made up of DNA. Oh, no, 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 no. RNA, right? And it can be single-stranded or double-stranded, right? So I already have my genetic material here. So little squiggly lines on the inside. Mine, shh, ladies, ladies, ladies. Shh. Our next one is capsid, right? So this is a what? It is a protein coat. Protein, protein coat. Oops. Um, that blank, the genetic material of the virus. What does it do? Read. Oh, protects. Good. Protects, right? Good. Protects. Well, that makes sense, right? Because look here, guys. I have a capsid, right? And it protects the genetic material. That's awesome. That's what it does. It's a great, great thing. Okay. Now there are some extra components some viruses might have. Look down at the bottom. Um, yeah, enzyme. Or, oh, lipid envelope. Where did he go? Here he is. Here is my lipid envelope. This is taken from part of the host cell's what? Membrane. M-E-M-B-R-A-N-E. As the virus bursts out of the cell, right? So it actually has some of the host membrane, which is kind of creepy. Um, what's my next one? Do I have major? Oh, glycoprotein. Remember these little, on the coronavirus, these are your little crowns. Receptors, right? Receptors. Super important. Yes. If someone got COVID, right, but they got no symptoms, so they never knew they had COVID, mm -hmm. and they went to school and they spread it all around, how would they know who who they had been before? Well, so we have something called contract tracing, right? Um, and so we do the best that we can. But how um, do you know if they have COVID if they have no symptoms? Sometimes you don't. So, I mean, sometimes we, there are people sometimes who will, they'll get symptoms, they'll test positive, and then they go back to everyone that they've had contact with in the past three to four days and no one else has had symptoms or are positive. Sometimes that happens. Most of the time, though, we're able to trace it back to at least one. So, like, maybe you came in contact with 15 people, but at least one out of those 15 are going to have, may usually have some type of symptoms. Do you know what I mean? As we're speaking, put your, thank you. Remember, y'all saw that video. Remember, you breathe it in, right? That's why we cover our noses. Um, okay. No, no, no. Guys, that's, so let me tell you something. You guys just saw how you got it, right? Did y'all just see that? You breathe it in. So this, when, when it first came out, there was all this craziness. Like everybody was like wiping their Amazon boxes and like wiping their grocery bags. I was like, that's crazy. So that's, now it doesn't mean it can't happen from touch, but it's not likely. 
the way that you get it, as you saw, was you breathe it in, right, the droplets. And the droplets, these proteins out here, guys, these glycoproteins, they only, remember it's like a lock and key, they only open up your bronchial and respiratory cells, right? So they, they can only interact with these cells. They can't interact with any of they, this does not match digest cells in your um, you know stomach line, right? So you breathe it in, right? Did you know that we break blood and we're like we're spreading it more because when we touch the like that bacteria gets onto your blood. Well, let me tell you. No, no, no. Let me tell you something really fast. We do, and that's true for bacteria. You know why, guys? Because bacteria are alive and they can live right there yeah, on, their, on your desk. Viruses are not alive. And the reason that they're not alive is you guys saw how it just infected that host cell. A virus needs a host to stay alive. No, I thought the, um, because when I went to look at the flu shot, mm -hmm. I didn't get the shot letter in my nose. Yeah. And my stepmom said that, um, that that one is the alive one that goes in my nose. Well. Okay, yeah, yeah. So, so sometimes you use that term like loosely, right? But from a scientific perspective, a virus is not alive because it cannot, like, if, if I spit and there's viral particles right here, they don't know exactly how long, but it's not going to be able to stay alive um, because it doesn't have a host cell to replicate it. It must have a human, it must have a host cell. It must have another eukaryote or prokaryotic cell. Does that make sense? So I'll actually do, I'll research that and tell you guys next time. Um, they've done some research on it, um, how long it actually stays alive. But again, bacterial cells is going to stay alive, right? Because it's bacteria, it's alive. Viral cells are not alive, so they must have a host cell. All right, great conversations. Let's go ahead and, oh, it's going to make me do matrix on my own. Um, I've never even, okay, this. Matrix proteins, these are used to blank the blank to the lipid envelope okay let's see these are used to what do y'all think that is this is the matrix um, that's, what do you think ah uh, I think that's great these are used to attach it's attached uh -huh. is it? yeah. yeah it's used oh, sorry or the C Oh, so this, the capsid is right here. The matrix is this membrane right here, right? Right inside of the lipid envelope. So these are used to attach the leg. Let's just say um, it's right inside to attach. The liquid? Oh, no. It's the capsid to the lipid envelope. Yeah. Capsid to lipid? Oh, to attach the capsid. That makes sense. Okay, that's what you were trying to tell me, Caitlin. Sorry. I wasn't, I mean, I was trying to pay attention. But yes, you're right. It attaches this to this, right? Attaches those two. All right. So now, what I would like to do, we're almost done. Yeah, we're not going to read about our friend the bacteriophage quite yet because we just don't really have. Oh. You. Actually, you know what? We're just going. To, we're just. No, no. Listen, we're just going to. Um, I'm coming, Mindy. I'm coming. We're just going to fill this in. Hola. What's up? Yes, Colt, you're going, sweets. Get your stuff. No, no, that is a curse word. Um. Okay. Down here, we're just going to label these bacteriophages for right now. Okie doke. So let me get. Okay, hold on. You know, Miss Lazar's. I'm not very. Um, all right. This one. Oh, let's finish this up here at the top. What is a virus? A virus is a very. What do you think? Contagious. Small. Guys, viruses are smaller than bacteria or cells. I mean, or well, bacteria or cells. That is is a very small particle that is able to what? To, uh, kill. Yeah, kill. Starts with an I. 
In fact, in fact, living cells. It uses the host machinery to blank new viruses. Create is a great word, but it looks like it's really long here. Hmm, let's see. Rep le Kate. Yep, replicate is a great word. Oh man. Those other ones I would have taken though, right? We just I know this is replicate because it's the same. If you count the letters, it's kind of like a little puzzle. It can cause blank and illness in the host. What do you think? I mean, it can cause death, but that's not the word. It is the word if you have two more H's. <laughs> two more. Set. I don't know. I don't know either. I was gonna say infection, but it's you know what? Let's. Do, that's actually a good word. I like that word. Let's do infection. Can we just put death? Please? Or death is fine too. But it doesn't always cause death, right? So let's make sure we identify that. Okay. So um, we're going to. Um, oh, yes. Yeah. Which one? Let me see. Oh, yeah, the, the, the glycoprotein. Oh, that one's attached and host. The one above. <gasps> oh, my gosh, I didn't do the glycoprotein. And that's the most important one, guys. These are used to what? Attach. Attach to the receptors of host cells. You're right. Sorry about that. Thank you. I heard you, Danielle, earlier, but I couldn't process what you were saying. I was like, I don't know what you're saying. Yeah. Uh huh. I got like I did my 13 year shots or something, mm -hmm. and I think I got more than one. And mm -hmm. I got it in this arm, and like it's still like if you touch it, it's still sore. It's sore. Yeah. So vaccines are always if if you get the flu vaccine, um, or even COVID. They hurt, and it's because you're. It's just because all these muscles right here. You've just infected this foreign object into your arm. Right now, your immune system is like it's all rushing right here. So it feels like bruised almost for a few days. It can. No, but like it's still there. After after that long? Yeah, like Oh, oh, you should go get that checked out. <laughs> <laughs> no, if it's still, I mean, serious, like. It, where where you get the injection, a few days, it might be sore. But if it hurts, you should definitely go get it checked out. You know what I mean? Because it shouldn't hurt longer than, like, two or three days. Don't worry. I mean, it's nothing to freak out about. But you should definitely – it shouldn't last that long. I'm not a doctor, but you know what I mean? But you could have. No, no, no. It's, it's probably nothing. It might just be, like, a lipoma or something, you know, like a little fat sack or something in there. Um, sometimes – when you um, have trauma to your body, you know, like your body starts sending all these crazy like cells and you get like little hard tumors or something. Not a bad tumor, you know, just like calcium. And stuff. So it's probably not even a big deal. Is that where you got the shot? I just got my flu shot in October right here. Oh, no, no. Yeah, yeah. You should go. You should go ask your mom to get that checked out. It shouldn't hurt. So. Um, okay. So um, this, let's just label this guy down here really fast. Again, bacteriophage. So guys, these are um, viruses that infect bacteria. Remember our friends, the bacteria, the prokaryotes? And they are not dangerous to humans, these particular viruses. So let's label these guys and then move, up, move it on to our next chapter. So... This, this out here, oh, I see what you're saying. You can't see all that business. This is the capsid, right? Do you guys see that? Just like up at the top, we know what capsid is, right? It's protecting the, this is what? The genetic material, genetic material. And then, ooh, this is like a really fancy part right here. This is called the collar. Looks like a little mini animal, huh? Mm -hmm. And then at the bottom right here, it's called our base plate. Um, this area right here is called our sheath. Right? So we have all these extra parts, right, that 
our corona friend does not have. And then down here, these are our spikes. So just like the coronaviruses, they, it uses those alteen proteins, right, to attack the human cell. The bacteriophage uses these, right? It's a way how he gets in. Mm -hmm. They're little spikes. And they actually puncture the bacterial cell and go in. And then our last one down here, this is called our friend, the tail fiber. Okay? So uh, for this sheet, yes. Right? So our virus friends. Well, no, because you're going to have to write on the back. So right now, actually, you can take a five-minute break. You need to go to the bathroom, get up and walk around, and then you're going to come back, and um, we are going to do a little, you're going to walk around and look at some of the microscopes, but you're going to record it on the back. See, si. see, si, see, si, senorita. Or I can just show you up here. Do you want me to just show you up here? Okay. You can take a five-minute break, get up and stretch, walk around. Um, online people, let me, oh, you're all participating. Hey, y'all don't go big groups out there. You just, you stand right there. Say, I'm taking a break. Okay. Um, let me tell you something. Who is this? Oh, um, Stephanie, Antonio, Alexis, Faith, and Tanner. Um, let me give you instructions really fast. So what we're going to do, um, okay. So what they're going to do in class um, is there's um, 11 microscopes around the classroom, and um, they're going to walk up and they're going to look in the microscope and they're going to identify the following. Now, you guys, so listen carefully. Um, let me see. Should you do this? No, you should not. I'm not going to have you guys do this part because you're not here to walk around. So what online people are going to do um, is the following. Do, 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 do. Let me show you really fast. I'm going to show you what to do, and then you guys are welcome to go. I'm going to have y'all. Oh, it's not as, oh, there it is. I'm going to have my online people. Um, you'll notice that either within today's folder, or you can see here, right, where it's due. Um, we did this one. You should already, if you participated last time, right, you have a grade in this or it was excused. 